Word up guys and welcome to another biology podcast. It's been a while, it seems ages since I was last sat in front of my computer recording my own voice. Anyway, new topic, start of genetics, so let's start having a look and see what's involved in that. Now although we just call it the genetics topic, if we actually look at the standard that we're actually learning about, the actual topic, uh, NZQA sort of call it if you like, what we're actually preparing for the exam, is called Describe the Role of DNA in Gene Expression. So let's start by actually looking at what they actually mean by describe the role of DNA in gene expression. Well, the way that I would define that in simple terms would be to say how DNA is involved in determining the traits that we have. For example, we've all got traits that we know about, things like eye colour, hair colour, whether our hair is curly or not, the type of haemoglobin we produce, whether we've got a disease or not, even whether we're good at sports or not. These are all things that potentially, or definitely in some cases, are controlled by certain alleles that we have. So they're controlled by our DNA. Now this unit actually looks to find out, okay, well, how is DNA involved in determining, for example, whether we've got blue eyes or brown eyes, or whether we're good at sport or we're not so good at sport, or whether we've got cystic fibrosis or we haven't got cystic fibrosis. And that's what we're learning about in this unit. So looking at what DNA is actually is, let's start off by DNA itself. Well, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, which is a really long word, but um, it's not something you really need to memorize. It's something you'll become familiar with anyway. And, you know, it's one of those long words you can use over dinner. It makes you sound really intelligent. I use it all the time. But basically, DNA is just a molecule. And it's a molecule that's found in all living things and even some non-living things like viruses, which we call non-cellular. So all living things have DNA, and the remarkable thing is, is that DNA is the same in all living things. It's exactly the same molecule, which is basically when we think about genetic modification, it's what allows us to take a gene from one species and put it into another species, because the DNA itself is exactly the same. Now, basically DNA is found in, in the vast majority of cells. There are a few exceptions where DNA is not found. But in most cells we have DNA, and in eukaryotic cells, that's cells with a nuclear membrane and nucleus, then we find it in the nucleus. And in prokaryotic cells, it's single-celled organisms, it's basically within the cytoplasm of the cell. Now DNA can actually be quite a huge molecule. And there's statistics that say that if you were to take the DNA out of one human nucleus and tie the different pieces of it up end to end, you'd have six meters of DNA. That's in one cell. So it's quite a huge molecule. And that's obviously quite a challenge to actually fit that amount of DNA into one cell. And that's where chromosomes come in. So the DNA is all twisted up and then wrapped around proteins. And in the form, and that's basically what makes the form of, of chromosomes, which are almost like the packaging units of DNA, which keep them really, really small and allow them to fit into something as small as a cell nucleus. So that's what DNA is. Now let's look a bit about how does DNA actually work, which is number two on the list that's actually displayed on the video right now. Now very simply, DNA is a recipe for proteins. In all living things, the majority of structures, that's like limbs or stems or leaves or whatever, have a certain content of protein that sort of forms the backbones of cells, if you like, not the backbones, but the majority of the, the, the actual mass of a a living thing is often actually made up of protein. So if you actually look at a human being, for example, our muscles are made up mostly of protein, our bones have protein in it, our eyes have protein, our skin is made up of protein, our fingernails and hair are made up of proteins, but they're all different types of proteins. And it's the DNA that actually provides the recipes for all these different types of proteins. So let's look at one example. You all know about a trait of eye colour, blue eyes and brown eyes, and we've talked about it loads all the way back since you and you were doing junior science. Now that's obviously a trait where people have different phenotypes. But the only difference really between people with blue eyes and brown eyes is the colour of the protein that their eyes actually have. And the reason that blue-eyed people have protein that's blue and brown-eyed people have protein that's brown is because of the DNA and the allele that they've got for that specific gene. So very simply, people with blue eyes have DNA that codes for a protein and the recipe of that protein is slightly different from the recipe for the brown eyed protein. 
Now the difference in that recipe is all down to the order of the bases in the DNA itself. And that's the A's, T's, C's and G's that we'll talk about a little bit later. And the order of those being slightly different is what actually gives a sort of slightly different recipe for the protein which basically means that the blue eye protein is slightly different from the brown eye protein and that's what gives it a different, its different colour. So very simply, DNA is actually a recipe for all the different proteins that an organism produces. And that's what actually gives the reason for the differences between all the different organisms. For example, plants are different from, or say for example a daffodil is different from a possum, all because it has different DNA, produces different proteins, which make it look and make it appear and make it very, very different from one another. Now you'll notice from the information that's on your screen at the minute that the third part of this podcast is going to be focused on what does DNA actually look like. And that's all about the structure of DNA. And we're going to go into a lot more detail than you have done in levels one and two when you've been looking at it before. Now unfortunately YouTube has a 10 minute limit on its clips and the podcast for this particular part of our learning is going to be around 14 minutes long. So this is where we're going to split it up and you're going to need to have a look at the second part of this podcast. So, I'll speak to you in a minute. As always, keep it real. Speak to you soon.